Welcome back to Houdini 101. This is going to be the final uh, regular part in this series where we go over exporting the animation that we've created using Redshift and Houdini 19. Uh, we have done everything from learning the interface, uh, importing geometry, setting up and assigning materials in Redshift, animating cameras, doing our lighting, and now it's time to do some simple post-processing and get this thing out of Houdini and onto your disk. So let's jump back into our project and get started. So here's where we ended off last time. We have a 240 frame animation at uh, two, uh, 24 sorry, frames per second. And we have these three shots that switch out uh, throughout this. Uh, and we have these three shots that switch out throughout this timeline. If I just play it through in real time, this is what it looks like. You know, it's nothing super complicated, just kind of getting us, getting us uh, familiar with some things inside the program. So let's go ahead and get started with some simple post-processing. The first thing that I think I would like to do is try and see if some volumetrics make this scene any more interesting. Now to turn on volumetrics with Redshift in Houdini, uh, what you're going to want to do is come out of your object network into your out network, select your Redshift ROP, come into your Redshift tab over here. Uh, if your settings are on basic by default, go ahead and switch these over to advanced. And let's come over to volume scattering and enable that. Now, all of our lights are contributing since that update was made and uh, all lights contribute automatically now. So we're going to have to change some settings here. First of all, I don't think I want my HDRI or my dome light to contribute to this volume probably because it's a little too bright. We'll see when we go ahead and come in here. And if we go into the contribution tab, we can come down to volume and set this to zero. And sure enough, now that we have just our uh, area lights affecting this, we're starting to look much, much better already. So I'm gonna go back into my output tab, come into my redshift ROP, uh, back into my volume scattering tab. Uh, I'm going to set my scattering to 0 0.01 maybe and see how this looks. This is going to give us a much more subtle effect, maybe 0 0.05. I just want something a little more interesting uh, visually than just the, bl the black background. So if I kind of scrub through here, we can see what exactly this does. Uh, this shot looks incorrect. I have some trouble with the Houdini um, uh, redshift render view sometimes. But the rest of these look pretty good for the most part. I may go ahead and come back into my scene view and maybe move this uh, this light back, if I can come into my object network. And this is going to be kind of per scene. Maybe your lights look fine. I just need to kind of move some of mine around a little bit. I will just grab this light and I will move it back out of frame maybe. I know it'll still be in some of the frames, but we will see how that goes. So that should be looking better. Uh, let's come into our render view here, resend this scene. And I'm liking, I'm liking the look that we're getting here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and come into this light. My redshift render view, it looks like it's flipped. Okay, so I was able to fix my redshift render view settings by coming to view, rotation, and then somehow I hit hit H. So now that my render view is displaying correctly, I'm just gonna scrub through some of this. I've got 
scene switches into this. And on this shot in particular here, uh, if I can zoom in correctly, if I hit uh, F, I believe, maybe to frame all, um, I want to add some uh, depth of field into this shot because it just kind of looks ugly as is. And so I'm gonna come into cam one because that is the camera controlling this shot. I'm gonna go into my redshift camera, depth of field. I'm gonna enable depth of field. Uh, I can come to frame 72 where this shot starts and use my little focus picker up here to set my focus point right on this inner ear cup here. And so then I'm going to uh, come into, let's see, I'm gonna uncheck use Houdini camera slash focus stop. Uh, and then we're gonna set our focus point right here. Uh, I'm gonna alt click on my focus distance and then I'm gonna bring my COC radius down to like 0.01 and see how that looks. And this is looking significantly better. Um, maybe like 0.015 is gonna be uh, really good. So I uh, set my focus distance there and then come through to wherever our camera switches. And then just click, click again in here with my focus picker still selected alt click on my focus distance and those things will be set up and ready to go. So now we have some depth of field in this shot. So now with most of our post-processing done, at least our post-processing inside Houdini, it's time to kind of move into the export phase. And the first thing I want to do is ensure that all three of these cameras are the same resolution. And I have changed one of mine just to show you exactly what, uh, what it involves as far as setting that up. So if you come into your camera, so I'm gonna start with cam zero, you can come into your view tab and you have resolution. I've set this frame to 4K. And then if I go one frame forward, you can see that this is just a little tiny guy in the corner over here. So if I come into cam one and go into my view tab, this is set to 1280 by 720, which is Houdini's default. And I'm just gonna match my other camera with 3840 by 2160, and then I'm gonna resend this in my redshift frame. And we've got this ultra high resolution, good depth of field. This sh shot is gonna end up looking really, really good when we're done. So I'll come into cam two, go into view, and I will also set this for 3840 by 2160. There is a way uh, in our actual render settings to override all of these so you don't, in theory have to do that, but um, I prefer to just for redundancy's sake. And so now if I come into this shot, it matches up. Matches up perfectly, looks great. We are ready to render, I think. So to do that, we're gonna wanna go from our object network up to our output network. We have our Redshift ROP1, and basically this ROP network is just where we're going to output things. So let's go through our redshift settings here. I'm not gonna do any sampling overrides for this video, just for simplicity's sake. The main things that I'm going to focus on are my resolution, my output path. So what we need to do is come into our exports here, and I'm gonna go to the root folder of this video and go exports. I'm gonna make a new folder uh, up here called uh, rendered animation frames. And then to save this file in Houdini, this is gonna be one of the annoying things uh, that Houdini doesn't do automatically for you. If I were to render this out as is right now, we would basically have an animation that just kinda renders its frames all over itself. So if you have any experience in like Nuke or anything like that, uh, that's what happens there. So you have to add a little code into your file name uh, to 
have it render frames individually. And so I'm going to name my frame underscore dollar sign capital F. And the dollar sign capital F is what is going to tell it to draw a frame number. And so if you hit accept, uh, that is going to work out. I'm going to set this to be a PNG sequence, 16 bit. Uh, no extra processing should be needed. I will go into my Redshift tab and I will come over to Motion Blur, enable this. I'm going to leave it on default uh, settings. Come over to Globals. I'm not going to touch any of these. Global Illumination, Brute Force, and uh, Irradiance Point Cloud is exactly what you want. We already set up our volume scattering uh, system. We shouldn't need anything in here. And so what we can do is just come back over to sampling. And you may want to do a couple of test images just to you know, see what your system likes. I'm going to set my samples here to around 250 just because that's going to be more than fine for an animation this simple. You can enable denoising if you want. The optics engine is very good. Um, it will add a little bit of render time and decrease your detail a little bit. I am not going to enable denoising because you can see what it does to my very highly detailed meshes in here. But uh, we will, so I'll just turn that off for the moment. And so now we are pretty much good to render this animation. And so I am just going to come up here and hit render to disk, assuming uh, my everything else is correct. You can, this is your resolution override where you can come in and uh, override the camera's resolution. This is important, so I almost missed this. Uh, this is the render camera. We need this to be our switcher so that it actually renders all of our different cameras out, the whole point of our animation. So now we should be good. I'm just going to click render to disk. And Houdini will begin to do its thing. You can see that we're rendering here. This is going to take a while. I will meet you back when it is done and we are all ready to conclude this series. All right, what's going on, guys? So it is the next day. My uh, render finished. I think it took somewhere around five or six hours. Um, but uh, I just got to film this quick little outro. Uh, you can see the animation that we made on the screen right now. We learned a lot really fast. Um, doing this kind of split up video thing is very new to me. So creating a course style tutorial in parts was very different for me. If it was hard to follow, I would certainly understand that. Um, there will be a video coming out very soon where I do this all in one video, just explaining a lot less of the basics as I go. Um, but I hope you were able to take this and learn something and kind of get up to speed in Houdini with what you can do in your other 3D softwares. There's lots of learning left to do, but uh, the deeper and deeper you delve into Houdini, the more interesting it gets. So hopefully you have enough of a base now to be able to go and follow other tutorials uh, at a much more advanced level than before. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I appreciate any subscriptions. Congratulations if you made it through this and you actually rendered out an image. Uh, that's huge <laughs> when you're first starting to learn. So um, just be sure that you continue to apply yourself to the program and Houdini will begin to become more and more native as you go. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in our next video.